So those are the two things, and that's that area underneath the curve. That's what that means. It's the probability or the proportion. So the data below represents the heights in inches of a random sample of 50 two-year-old males. So their heights in inches. Yep. Um, draw a histogram using a lower class limit of the first class equal to 31.5 and a cost width of one. So this is some review of something we did a couple chapters ago. Hopefully I have a blank one here. Okay, well, I'm going to use this one. But what we're going to do, you guys are going to help me out. And our lower class limit was supposed to be 31.5. So classes. And a lower one is 31.5. Now, here's what we have to remember. The class width tells us how far we have to go to get to the next lower class limit. So the next lower class limit, if our class width is 1, is going to be 32.5. That makes sense. And then we're going to have 33.5. And does it say how many we need to have? Uh, are these in order? No, of course they're not in order. Come on, Mr. Anderson. Get with it. 39.3. I know we at least go that far. So 34.5, 35.5, 36.5, 37.5, and 38.5. And so what? Are the upper class limits for each of these? You remember how we find the upper class limit if this is our next one? 32.4. 32.4. And the next one will be 33.4 and 34.4. It's always one less, one whatever decimal less than this one. So 35.4, 36.4, 7.4, 8.4, 9.4. Thirty-nine point four, and I—that's the biggest one I see. But we might, as we're going through, we might find some that are bigger than that, and then we'll just add another class. And so where does thirty-nine point eight? You see a thirty-nine point eight? Yes. Okay. So thirty-nine point five to forty point four. But since it's thirty, thirty-nine point eight would be gold. Oh, never mind, because you're at forty. Yeah, I I just added one more. So what we're gonna do for for this one, we're just gonna put in tally marks. So that'll make this a little bit easier. 36.0 goes in here, right? 36.2 goes in here. 34.8 uh, goes in right here. Uh, 36 back here. 34.6 is going to be right here. 38.4 is right here. 35.4 is right here. 36.8 is right here. Um, 34.7 is right here. 33.4 is right here. So does everybody understand what we're doing so far and how we're just putting them into groups right now? Okay. So I've done the first row. Second row, 37.4. 38.2. 31.5, 36 36.9, 36 36.9, 35.7, 35.7, 35.9, 39.3. Okay, so that's the first two rows. Next one, 34.0, 36.9. Why do we use this in the real world? 35.1. <laughs> oh, people analyze statistics all the time. There's a, in my world. <laughs> oh, yeah. In fact, here's, I mean, it would look a little different. They wouldn't probably just do this. No, <laughs> hang on. Let me finish the row first. <laughs> 37. Did I do the 37 yet? I don't think so. No. 37.0, 36.2, 36 36.1, 35.2, uh, 35. You can wait till we're done. We can do this up here. 35.6, 33, 36.8 is right here. Okay, so we're done. Okay, so um, for instance, uh, Sally, to answer your question, 
it, it may not be necessarily exactly this, but they study statistics all the time, basically so that the company can make sure they're making money. So like, I think we used the example of life insurance last year, last week, last year, last week, and how they have it basically calculated of on average when people are gonna die. And so that's how they set their prices for how much they have to pay to buy life insurance. Like for instance, if you're, uh, how old are you Christian? 20 years old. And he buys a life insurance policy for 10 years. He's probably gonna pay almost nothing for that. And the reason is because the chances of him dying in the next 10 years are not that high. Almost, I mean, it's not zero. It is possible still so it could happen, but almost zero. But they have this stuff studied and they, they figure this stuff out and it's all so that, I mean, they have entire divisions that study this stuff um, to make sure that the company is not charging too much or too little. And so that's why you got companies competing against each other to give you slightly lower, but they still, there's still a point where they're like, no, we're not gonna go any lower than this because we're gonna have to losing money because people should be dying at this point in time or whatever. So, but, and this is heights. Um, if you have ever gone to, any of you have ever had children and you go to the doctor and they tell you on your yearly checkup, oh, your child is in the 50th percentile or whatever, or 20th percentile. Um, and then they compare that and they rate it. And so for instance, um, the last time we went to the doctor, one of my sons had been in the, I don't remember what it was, but anyway, he was in a certain percentile and his percentile dropped a lot for the next year. And so the doctor's like, uh, we better keep an eye on that just to make sure that something weird isn't happening because of, because of that. So they, I mean, there's people that study this in business and medicine in, in everything. So this is, I mean, now they probably don't make tables like this, like we're having to do because they have a computer, they just type it in and then it just figures it automatically. But we're doing it by hand because I'm not making you guys do the computers. So anyway, back to this, 33.5 is right here. 35.0 is right here. 35.1, uh, 35.2, 34.4 uh, is right here. 36.7. 36, uh, 36 again, 35.7, 35.7 again. All right, bottom row, 38.3, 33.6, 33.7, 33.8, 33.9, 33.10, 33.11, 33.12, 33.13, 33.14, 33.15, 33.16, 33.17, 33.18, 33.19, 33.20, 33.21, 33.22, 33.23, 33.
My lines are not going to be very straight because they're big. Uh, 36 is 11. Then 37 comes back down to 10. And 38 comes back down to 5. And then um, uh, we're down to 3. It's tough when I'm estimating from that far away. I think this one should be a little shorter. I'm going to have a problem like this in the test. I hope not. You don't like this problem? <laughs> if it was, I would give you the data, but that, that's the, here, there's a point to this question. The I point, mean, yes, yes, but like not this long. I mean. Oh, this long? Yeah. yeah. So what is the point of this, this question? We're looking at this and, and we're like, do we see that this is like a bell-shaped curve? Yep, this yes. is a normal distribution? Yes. If you made the curve... If you made the curve, do we see how it would look like this? Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're just using that data. Um, and the question is, do you think that the variable height of two-year-old males is normally distributed? Well, yeah, by looking at this data, it definitely looks normally distributed, right? It definitely looks like it. Yes. Okay. So that one is definitely a yes, it looks normally distributed. But that's kind of the point of this is we can see with a picture and we could actually see it, since I was doing tally marks over here to make it a little easier, we could see that it looked like it was bunched in the middle and then less at the, the outsides. Okay, questions on that? Other than you didn't like doing it because it took a little while? I mean, it was 50 scores, so I had to kind of work through it. Okay. All right, uh, suppose that a random variable x is normally distributed, mean of mu and standard deviation of sigma. The area under the normal curve for any interval of, wait, we already had this one. Did I go backwards by accident? Uh, it's on the notes. No, the normal density function. It was normal. The role of area, normal density, Where am I going? Did I go past it again? Yeah, that's it. This is it. Area under the normal curve. Okay. So you see how this is pretty much identical? It's the exact same thing. Okay. The density underneath there and then the population. So the interval, the area under the normal curve for any interval of the random variable X represents the proportion of the population in that group or the probability um, of the selected individual of being in that group, chances that they're in that group. So it's the same thing we've been doing. Nothing really new here. Uh, the heights of giraffes are approximately normally distributed <laughs> with a mean of 2,200 pounds and a standard deviation of 200 pounds. Draw a normal curve with the parameters labeled and then shade the area under the normal curve uh, to the left of x equals 2,100 pounds. So here is our normal curve. You'll get good at drawing these or at least you'll try to get good at it. Now, the parameters that we're talking about are like the mean. What do we know is the very middle of this? That's the mean, right? And it's 2,200 pounds. So this point right here, now notice we haven't turned it into standard normal. This is just normal curve, okay? So the mean is that 2,200 pounds. <clears throat> when we go one standard deviation this way, it's and one standard deviation this way, how far are we going? 200. 200 pounds. So this one would be? 2,400. 2, and this one would be? 2,000. 2,000. 2,000. Okay. And then if we went um, another one, because we, I mean, let's just go ahead and do, all, do three of them. So if we went another one this way, it would be? 2,600. And this one would be? 1800. 1800 and then if we went our third one this would be 2800 and this would be 1600 
Now, again, the curve doesn't end here, but by that time, it's so small that there's hardly anything outside of those areas. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to mark shade. Uh, uh, we're supposed to draw a normal curve, which we've done, uh, then shade the area under the normal curve to the left of 2,100. Where is 2,100 going to be? Yeah, halfway right here. And then we want to the left of that, and it's just going to be all that stuff. Okay. Make sense? Is the answer? That's the answer yeah. for that one. Part A. So is everybody okay with how we would draw that picture? What we find out is the pictures all look the same because they're all normal curves. The only difference is how we label the means and stuff and the standard deviations. Okay. All right. Everybody good there? Yes. Part B. So, so how, how do we do that? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Um, suppose that the area under the normal curve to the left of 2,100 pounds is 0 0.3085. So they're telling us that we should assume that this part that I've shaded in green is 0 0.3085. That makes sense from the question. Mm -hmm. Suppose that the area under the normal curve to the left of this, which we've shaded, is 0 0.3085. Provide the two interpretations of this result. Okay. So that's going back to those. We saw it twice, right? It's basically saying the same thing twice. What does this 0 0.3085 mean? What is it telling us? There's two things. So you have 0. 0.7. Yeah, about 0. 0.7 is then to the right. Right. But we're looking for what is this? What is this saying? What if we just focus on this side? About a third of it. Yeah, but what does it mean? And here, and you're, and you're on the right track with the one third part. So let's talk about this. The first thing it means it means is um, about. Uh, we'll say about 0. 0.3085 of what are we talking about? Of the giraffes. Yes, have a weight less than 2,100 pounds. That's the first thing. It can tell us about the proportion. So this is saying the proportion of giraffes that have a weight less than that is 0 0.3085, or 30.85% if you want to think about it that way. Okay? That was the first thing it tells us. The second thing, and it's it's very similar, but a little bit different. The second thing it says is um, the chances of a randomly selected giraffe weighing less than 2100 pounds is 0.3085 okay so these are the two different things that it tells us and it's important to understand the distinction the first one is talking about how many what percentage are less than the 2100 pounds they're saying okay if i look at all the giraffes um about about 30 percent almost 31 percent have a weight less than 2100 pounds does that make sense that's one way of looking at this because you've got all the giraffes on this scale 30 percent of that 31 percent about is down here the other way of thinking about it is kind of it's related if I randomly selected a giraffe out of my huge herd of giraffes that I evidently have, but if I randomly selected a giraffe, the chances of its weight being less than 2,100 pounds would be about 31%. Because that's how many of them are down here, right? Does that make sense how those are related but actually slightly different? So that's what that's, that's, what that's telling us. It's like those problems where we said um, you had a 20% chance of of whatever getting a ticket on the way to work 
Well, that means you have an 80% chance of not. So if you just start going through that, 20% of people would get tickets on their way to work. And if you select a randomly a random person, 20% of them may have gotten tickets on their way to work. So it's two different things. Okay. One is talking about proportion, how many out of the entire group, and the other one is talking about what are the chances, probability. But they're really very similar uh, in how they and how they work. Any questions on that one? Okay. We have a test. No. We'll be doing four, five, six, three. Let's see. We did two and three last time, right? We did. Yeah. We did three and four. Yeah. So we did five last. So time. five, six, seven, eight will be on the next test. Oh. But they're all very short. Like we're doing chapter six only has two sections. Chapter seven, like we're going to start chapter seven tonight. It has like one, three, two or three, something like that. But they're all very short, and they're all very related. No. No, they're not. Sally doesn't think they're related. Maybe in your brain. <laughs> yeah, we did five last week, right? Which was the uniform. Yeah. So you can see this is kind of related to uniform. Because, I mean, anyway, I'm not going to, whatever. I know. I'm not going to try and argue with you about it, but there are things that are related about them. Uh, standardizing a normal random variable. And again, we already talked about this, right? Z score. So suppose the random variable X is normally distributed, mean of uh, sigma, standard deviation, sorry, mean of mu, standard deviation of sigma. The random variable is given like this. It's normally distributed. We already, we already saw this, right? We already saw this. Again, this is a slightly different slide, but we're trying to standardize it. Oh, that's bad. My 15 jumped to the bottom. Anyway, is yours on the bottom? No. no, it's there where it's supposed to be. Okay, so the 15 should be over here inside this parentheses, right? Because what does it say? Mean is 100, standard deviation 15, right? Okay, so IQ scores can be modeled by a normal distribution with a mean of 100, standard deviation of 15. And again, this is just the notation they use to represent that, but it's the same information. Um, round to four decimal places, find uh, Z when an individual's IQ score is 120. So we're trying to take that 120, which is a raw data score, and change it into a z-score. And how do we do that? We just use our formula. Z equals, and what do we do? X minus u. So 120 minus 100 divided by 15. 15. So this is 20 over 15. And what do we get when we divide that? I guess they want us to do four decimal places. Like I said, usually the tables only deal with two, but 1.3333. We'll humor them. Okay, so 1.3333. Now, like I said, on the table, when we start using our tables, that's as far as you're going to see on the table. Okay, if we were using a computer or a calculator, then we could put in the 0.33 uh, for the four threes, and it might make a slight difference, but it's not going to make very much difference. There's just not that much change there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That one, how we do it? Again, we've done a couple of these already. Okay. Find the area under the standard normal curve to the left of Z. I think my picture got in the way here. It's probably right down here. You just can't see it because it's white. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw our picture, and we just found out that it was 1.3333, correct? Mm -hmm. And this is where we need our table, but unfortunately I don't have it. So we're going to have to uh, make some adjustments. All right, so this is, in standard normal, that's zero, right? Mm -hmm. And this is one. one. Yep. And so this is two. So approximately where do you think 1.33333 is going to be? Between, yeah, just a little between. further, right? And in fact, it's one third, so it would be about right here. Now, we want to find the area under the standard normal curve, and it said to the left of? Yeah. Okay. To the left of that. I remember why I didn't print them off. I couldn't find a good picture. Okay. So I will have to find this for you because you're going to need it. Um, but we have these tables that are for standard normal distributions. And let me see if I can. Actually, we're going to pause here.
And I'm going to see if I can find one online, and I'm going to pull it up and stick it in here so that we can use it. Okay. So let's take a short break, and hopefully I can find that. Okay. So we're that didn't print. I was hoping it would, but so I could get them into your hands right away. So I will um, get this printed up for you guys who have it for next week. Uh, in the meantime, I will try and get it set up tonight and email it to you. So if you want to print it off or you, so that you can find it easily. Um, but we're going to go through how we do this. So notice our Z-score. And if we go back to the PowerPoint, here is our table, right? And this Z-score that we have here is 1.3333. That makes sense. We are, had already found that previously. Okay. So what we do is we're gonna, and you're gonna have these tables. I'll get them, get them for you here. But what we do is we're gonna have this table. Did and you get that number from the table? That number we got from Part A. We had already done that. Okay. So it's it's this one right here. It's, it's, it's. Yep. So yeah, that's not from the table. It's just from this. So what we do is we just go in this table, and you see over here the. Uh, the Z score, okay, it says Z, and then it gives these numbers with one decimal point. Then these numbers give you the second decimal point. As I say, they only have two decimal places, so there's not really any reason for us to go to four decimal places. So really, 1.33 is all we're going to look for, okay? Now, the other important thing about this table is it automatically gives you the area to the left of the line. Okay, that's what it does. The table automatically does that. It gives you the area to the left. So this picture should be like. Yeah, we hope that it's like that. In, the, in our case, it is because we were asked for the area to the left of 1.33. Right, that's what the question asked for. If you go back to your, your question there, part B, find the area to the left of 1.33. Okay, so that's what the table tells us is the area to the left. So the table is going to tell us our answer when we find the right spot. But what we're going to look for in the table is positive 1.33. So notice over here, we've got 1.3. We want 1.33. Let me pull it down a little bit. Okay. So here's our 1.3. That one was dead. Here's our 1.3. And then here is our second three, right? So that tells us this right here is going to be our answer. Now what that means is, what's the area to the left of 1.33? It's 0 0.9082. It's just, it's a table of, of all those proportions of all those areas underneath the curve it's a it's a it's called a z score table it's called a normal standard normal standard distribution table and so it's all these are different values of z scores that are less than this amount okay so if we found the bigger the number is the further out on our normal curve it's going so the bigger these numbers are going to get the further down we go okay so all we did here is we found the 1.33, and that was our answer, okay, 0 0.9082. And so that was our answer for part B. If I pull that back up, I'm going to leave this on here so we can find it easily, okay? But 1.33, and what was our number, 0.9082? So our answer to this question, find the area under the standard curve to the left, 0 0.9082 is our answer. And like I said, we just get that from the table. So uh, like in the test, we have a table. Yes, I will give you the table. And, and you're going to, like I say, I'll get it printed off for you so you have it next week so you can start practicing with it. And I will send it to you. On, I'll probably send it out on Canvas just to everybody so you all get that same email and I'll have that in table. Email? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try and do it tonight between classes if I can. So that way you'll have it right away. But I have to download it first and get it so that it looks nice. Okay. So that's part B. We just have to look it up in the table. A lot of these is just look it up in the table after you draw the picture. 
Okay. Here's another one. Part C, interpret this area in context of IQ scores. Okay. So what does this mean in context of IQ scores? Now remember what this was saying. We had an IQ score of 120 before our break. Okay, we found the Z score was 1.33333. And then we just found the area to the left of that was 0.9082. Now what does that mean? Their score is higher than it means this person's IQ score of 120 is higher than almost 91% of the other people. Okay, so that's what this means. It means that this person's score is higher than 90, about 91% of people, or it means if I randomly select someone out of the world, 90% chance that they're in this range from 0 to 120. Okay, or about 91%. Okay, does that make sense? So those are our two, um, our two interpretations. Ninety point eight two percent of people are down here, and ninety percent chance of selecting somebody randomly that's down there in that. Okay. So we're going to be drawing that. You'll see I have this picture on there a lot for you because we're going to be drawing this picture a lot. So you have a nice home there that you can just use. Okay. So. Okay, I gotta fix this because this is true. So, okay. So the IQ scores can be modeled. We've already got this. Use the complement rule. Use the complement rule to find the area to the right of Z. Okay, now obviously my picture got off a little bit because of me adjusting that. But to the right of Z, if to the left is 0 0.9082, remember the complement rule means that we take 1 minus the area to the left. So if we take 1 minus the 0 0.9082 and we get 0 0.0918, that is the area that's over here on this side. Does that make sense? Since the total is one, if we've got 0 0.9082 over here, all the rest is on the other side. Does that make sense? Right, because all one all together. Like if I said that 60% was over here, wouldn't it make sense 40% is over there, right? Because all together has to be 100%. It's the same thing if we talk about this. The area is 1. 0 0.9082 is over here. The rest is over there. 1 minus the 0 0.9082. Okay. Questions on that? The complement rule is something we've talked about, but I know some of us maybe struggle with it a little bit. But we're going to use it in this case a lot. Because... The table, remember, always tells us to the left. So if we need to know to the right, we've always got to do one minus whatever's to the left. And that gives us what's to the right. Okay. All right. Steps for finding our value for the normal random variable. Uh, draw a normal curve. Shade the area corresponding to the proportion, probability, or percentile. Use a table or technology. We're going to focus on using the table. Um, again, calculators and computers will do this for you uh, if you get to a point where you're going to start using those with whatever you're doing. Like I said, if you get to a job where you're going to need to use this, they're going to probably show you how to use the programming or you need to brush up yourself to make sure you know how to use the programming. But um, to find the z-score that corresponds to the shading area. So... Uh, obtain the normal value from our formula, and it's going to look like this. So this formula right here is just that other one rearranged. Okay, if you go back to that other formula, which said Z equals, you guys know it. What did it say? Okay. You always write like two That's not. If you write like that, that is six. But that is three. No, it's not. Think of it is like this. It is similar like this. You don't know. It's okay. All right. Anyway, 
So if we rearrange this formula and we just rearrange it like this, if we try to get the x by itself, for those of you who are algebra gurus, if we're trying to get this x by itself, what do we do next? Multiply by sigma. That cancels with that. And now it's over here. So now we have sigma times z equals x minus mu. How do we get the x by itself now? Add mu. So mu plus. And I got crazy with that. Okay. But do you see how that's the same thing? Okay, it's just rearranged. That's all that it is. It's the same exact formula. It's just rearranged. You don't have to be able to rearrange it. You just have to use those two formulas. Okay, but I wanted you to know it's not like some brand new formula they made up. It's it's in there, and I'm guessing that's on your paper too, right? Yeah. Actually, I don't see it on there. Not the rearranger. If you want to put this one on your on your note sheet. You can, or on your formula sheet, you can put that on there. Chapter six. Chapter six. Yeah, that's the first one is how to find the z-score. The second one is going from the z-score back to the raw data, the x value. Okay. okay. We got it. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at this. It says the combined verbal and quantitative reasoning score on the GRE is normally distributed with a mean of 1,049 and a standard deviation of 189. What is the score of a student whose percentile rank is at the 85th percentile? So remember, what does the 85th percentile mean? We actually talked about this a long time ago, like in chapter one or two. What does the 85th percentile mean? means that you're 15th less than 100. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a different way of saying it, but it means that that score is more than 85% of the other scores. Okay? Now, where would that be? If it's higher than 85% of the scores, here's 50%, right? Does it have to go this way or this way? This way. Because if it's more than 85%, and these markings, it doesn't matter. I'm just We're just going to put this here for notation-wise. So this is our, um, we're looking for this X value, okay? And the idea is that this group over here is 0.85. Does that make sense? 85th percentile, 0.85? Does that make sense right here? Yeah. Okay. So what we have to do now is this is, this is, a, this is a proportion. This is area under the curve, right? 0.85 is the area under the curve. That makes sense. It's a percentile rank or proportion or however you want to think about that. So what we need to do then is look at our table. So let's pull up our table. And here's the part that's different. We're looking for the, we, we know the area this time. We know the area is 0.85. We have to find the 0.85 in our table. And there's a whole bunch of numbers here, right? So if we can find, and we have to find that's closest to 0.85. So we're looking right about here, it looks like. We see that 0.8485 and 0.8508. So it's between there somewhere. We just pick the one that's closer. So we would pick this one right here. Oh, I did it again. Hang on. I need to move this down so we can see the numbers. <laughs> there. Okay. So point. I know it's in this row. He's got to find it again. Here it is. Point, point eight five zero eight. Can you see that that's the closest to this? Okay. So we're looking for the z-score that goes with that. Well, so 1.0, and then the last digit is a 4. So our z-score is 1.04. Does that make sense? And that's how we find our z-scores for the with the table? That's how, if we know the percentage already, that's how we can find the corresponding z-score in the table. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we know the z-score, then we find that here, and then we locate the percentage or the, the proportion in the table. So now we're going backwards, actually. You missed the other one because we were, we were doing that. Yeah. So, um, so if we go back to this, to answer our question, the question was, what was the score? Oh, yeah, we've got our z-score right here. <laughs> so we're going to use our formula. And the formula said 
x equals mu plus sigma times z, right? Mm -hmm. And that's make sure you write that down. That is not in your formula sheet, okay. um, but you'll want to write it down. You can put it on your formula sheet. It is on your six. notes, but. On chapter six. Yep. So what did we know that our mu was in this case? Because they told us. Mu is what? It's in the, it's in the problem. Means 1,049. Plus sigma, what is our sigma in this case for this problem? 189 times Z. And what did we figure out Z was? 1.04. 1.04. So at that point, you just type it into your calculator. And you will have to make sure, especially for some of you, make sure you do this part first and then add the 1049 for order of operations. And what do we get for our X value here? 1245.56. 1245. Is that right? Yes. 0. 0.56? Yes. Okay. And as we're looking at this, um, we'll usually go, since the original data was no decimal places, remember we go like one decimal place. So 1245.6. Okay. And again, I don't even, I don't know anything about the GRE. I know it's a test you take to get into graduate school, I think. But I don't know if you can get decimal numbers. So they maybe even would round it off to 1246. But like I said, the directions will tell you what to round it off to. Okay. But that's how we can use the percentile to actually find the original score. We, so we can go from what we've just done is we went from the raw data score to the proportion. That was what we did the first time. And then here we just went from the proportion to the raw data score. Of what they got on the test. Okay. Does that make sense? So two different types of problems there um, to be a little bit careful with. Okay, 6.9. It says it is known that the length of a certain steel rod is normally distributed with a mean of 100 centimeters and a standard deviation of 0.45 centimeters. Suppose that the manufacturer wants to accept 90% of all rods manufactured. Determine the length of rods that make up the middle 90% of all the steel rods uh, manufactured. Use two decimal places when rounding if need be. Okay, so this time they told us where to round it off to. Do I have a paper there or a uh, picture there for you guys? Yes. Okay, that means I probably have it here too then. <clears throat> Good, all right. So the idea is, in this case, who can who can describe this picture for me? This picture is a little bit different than the last one. Who can describe what's going on here? Uh, the, uh, the meter is 90%. We want the middle 90%, right? The middle 90%. So again, just so we can kind of see boundaries, this is not going to be super accurate, but we want this amount right here to be 0.9 in the middle, right? Does that make sense? Now here's where we have to be a little bit creative with our table. Let's think about this a little bit, and this is kind of how we have to go through it. How much is left over here and over here if you're taking out the middle 90%? Five percent, five. Five right? Which would be 0 0.05 there and 0 0.05 here. Oops, 0 0.05. Here, does that make sense? So if I want to find this point right here in the table, what do I have to look for? Because remember the table always tells us to the left of. So if I want to find this point, what do I have to look for in the table? The 0 0.05, the area to the left of. So if I want to find this one, I'm looking for, look for, 0 0.05. Now, what about this one? Because that's my other goal. I want to find this one. What do I have to look for in the table if I'm looking for this one? 0.95. Yeah. Does that make sense? Because what's to the left of this point? Well, this 90 plus the 0.05. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. 
So you've really got to look at your table and keep in mind, what is the, you've got to look at your drawing here and keep in mind, what is the table going to tell you? The table is always going to tell you to the left of it. So 0.95 is what we're looking for here. We're going to find out something interesting about these two numbers in just a minute when we pull up our table. But does everybody have this written down? We're looking for, for these two numbers in our table. And again, these are the areas, right, that we're looking for. So we're going to have to look in the middle of our table to figure out what they are in order to find the z-scores. So let's pull our table back up here. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, she says I understand it. I'm like, yeah, it's not much. I guess. <laughs> Come on. Here we go. So our table here, now notice all of these from zero and above are <clears throat> 0.5 and bigger, right? All the tape, all the numbers in the middle are mm -hmm. 0.5 and bigger. So let's go ahead and find the 0.95 first. Is that okay? So 0.95. Where are we at here? Here's 955. Right there. Right here. In this area right here. That makes sense. Okay, so this one here's my blue. So we're looking right here, and this is kind of a special case. You notice how it's halfway in between those two? Okay. Um, as a general rule, we tend to just round that up so that we include uh, a little bit more. So what is this value? It's one point six five. So that is our 0.95 value. Does that make sense? So again, we're looking at the side. 1.6 is its row. And then we come down here and we get the 5 that goes on the end of that 1.6. Okay. And then I'll just put this over here too. We're going to look for the 0.05. <clears throat> All right, so the point zero 0.05, and you may guess, that's got to be to the left of, of the center, which means it's going to be negative numbers. Does that make sense? So if I go down here a little bit further, oh, wait, maybe it's above. There it is. Okay, so let's see if we can find our 0 0.05. Okay, no, no, no. This one always messes me up because it works backwards because they get the... Yeah, anyway. Oh, wait, this one is set up. Oh, I like this one. This one makes <laughs> sense to me. The other ones that I've seen, they always start with negative uh, zero. They, so they go backwards. They get smaller as you go down. So this one I like. Okay. Um, so where are we at here? Point zero two, zero three, zero four, zero five. No, nope. no, I'm still backwards here. Okay. Okay, here it is. We see how it's right in this area right here again, halfway in between those two. Okay. And again, what we're going to see is we want to extend out a little bit further, which is actually this one, right? So there's a it's a little bit further than our line. Does that make sense how that's a little bit further? So notice what this number is. Negative 1.65. Now, why is that true? Remember how this thing is symmetric? Yeah. So what happens on one side is exactly the same as what happens on the other side. Let's go back and look at our picture and see if this makes sense. Do we see we've got 0 0.05 over here mm -hmm. and 0 0.05 over here? Mm -hmm. So on the outsides, this is 0 0.05 on this side, 0 0.05 on this side. So if this is negative 1.65, this one has to be positive 1.65 because mm -hmm. it's in the same location related to out from the middle okay so we've got our z scores and remember we just did this on the last problem our formula was z uh not z x x, x equals u plus sigma times z so we're just gonna and they tell us to round off to two decimal places if we need to so x equals for this top one 100 Mu is, yep, 100 plus, plus standard deviation, 45. 0.45 times, and then we've got our 1.65. So you go ahead and plug that in, and what do you get? 
0.74 like that? Two decimal. Is that right, though? Is that what you said? I just didn't hear what you said. Yes. Okay. So this value right here on the top side is 100.74 centimeters. Okay. So the other one will be minus. It'll be, yeah, negative. x equals 100 <clears throat> plus 0.45. The difference is this is a negative 1.65. So it ends up subtracting, right? And what do we get over here? 99.26. Okay, and that's the lower value. So in other words, 90% of the rods that they're producing are between 99.26 centimeters and uh, 100.74 centimeters. And centimeters are really small, right? So they're trying to make sure that they're making their 100 centimeter rods as close to 100 centimeters as possible. Okay. So they say it's going to be uh, minus 100. So your answer is the 99.26 to 100.74. Let me just double check the question here. Determine the length of rods that make up the middle 90%. Yeah. So everything in this range is the middle 90%. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So um, one thing to note, the notation Z sub alpha, pronounced, yeah, pronounced Z sub alpha, <laughs> is the Z score such that the area under the standard normal curve to the right of Z sub alpha is alpha. So in other words, if we were doing this one right here, this would be, um, Z sub 0 0.05. That would be this one. Because that's saying to that the right. Area. It's the area to the right of that line. So remember our picture here? Uh, let me erase this so you can be reminded of what the picture looked like. So our picture looked like this. And we had this mark over here. And we said this was 0 0.05 because we needed the middle 5%. We had one over here. 0 .0, 0, yeah, 0.05 was here too. So this mark right here could be noted as Z sub 0 0.05. 0 0.05 is the area to the right of this mark. So would it be the same for this area? This one, if you did it over here, this would be Z sub 0.95 because it's to the right of it. Right now, I don't know that we use this a whole lot, especially because what does our table always tell us? To the left, to the left. right? There's one table that does to the right, but the rest all do to the left. Right? And I think that's yes. Just one answer. Yeah, there's. This is just a note on how we write it. How you okay. you may see it sometimes. 